will take up decks and shelves. Before doing that, once again, let us take a look back on the bulkheads, what we did last time. Bulkheads, well, uh, as we have already talked about, accommodation bulkhead and wash bulkhead. Those are essentially non watertight bulkheads. And you have transverse subdivision bulkhead or long channel bulkhead, they are the watertight bulkheads, right. <coughs> so, these bulkheads either are stiffened flat plate bulkheads like this, these are stiffened flat plate bulkheads. That means the bulkhead cross section is essentially a plate which is having stiffeners. Either the stiffeners are vertical or horizontal depending on where you get the minimum, I mean where you can achieve the minimum section modulus for a given situation. Maybe we will take a little, little more look at the these two cases of bulkheads where we have either vertical stiffness. Suppose the bulkhead plating is like this, right. If it is a case of a, a your what you call in case of a general cargo ship, a general cargo ship section if we look, it is somewhat like this. That means you have inner bottom plating, double bottom is there, you have a lower deck, you have a top deck. This is in way of hatch opening, where the hatch opening is not there, obviously it is a continuous plate, right, the top deck as well as the lower deck. And thereby your bulkhead, suppose if I see the profile, you have the bulkheads like this, <coughs> right. You have your double bottom going like this. Then if I assume this to be an engine room, then I have my lower deck run, running here. So thereby the lower deck is coming somewhere here in the bulkhead, the double bottom is coming somewhere here. Right. So, what we see here is that this particular span, this length as well as this length, they are much smaller compared to this length, is not it? So, that makes us, uh, I, I mean from this we get the clue that in case of a flat plate stiffened bulkhead, if it is used for general cargo ship it will have stiffeners in this direction, right. Why? Because in that case I have spans are less. If I take a section here, the section would be, you have the, this is my bulkhead plate, well, Suppose this is the bottom shell, inner bottom shell, this is the lower deck, main deck, right. This is your main deck, this is your lower deck, this is your inner bottom plating, bottom shell. Okay, so the stiffeners are like this. So the arrangement of the stiffness will be like this, vertical stiffness, right. Now the same thing in case of a, just let us take a case of an another vessel, say a oil tanker, a oil tanker, a small oil tanker rather by small I mean not those very large crude carriers, but it can be a small oil tanker, a oiler 
oiler is nothing but a small oil tanker which carries oil for replenishment. Suppose you have in the offshore platform, you need fuel replenishment or you have those uh, um, what do you call those uh, naval vessels, big naval vessels which are generally out at the sea for fueling of the, those vessels. A oiler will go from the shore, take the necessary oil and it is supplied there. So, that is also nothing but an oil tanker of smaller capacity, smaller size. So, there you may not go for a double wall construction. So, it can be a single wall construction with necessary double bottom because today for uh, uh, big oil tankers, it is mandatory that you have double wall construction. That means, you have the outer shell, you have inner shell, right. Anyway, so, oiler is like this and uh, well, there you may need a central line bulkhead. Apart from the transverse bulkheads, you may also have a central line bulkhead dividing the compartment for some other purpose, some other reason which is called uh, to reduce the so called effect of free surface. When a liquid is there, it, 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 it generates a free surface, right. So, that to reduce the effect of free surface, we may need a center line bulkhead. So, once the center line bulkhead is there, so what is happening? If we again see uh, as far as the stiffener orientations are concerned, now here we do not have any lower deck, right. So, this particular span for this height is definitely more than this height. Is not it? It will be always more because here you have the support point is the bottom uh, inner bottom plating and then the top deck right. <coughs> Whereas, if I take the stiffener in this direction that means, if I stiffen the bulkhead with stiffeners then stiffeners will run like this right. That means, here the support point is the side shell and the center line bulkhead. So, this is less. So, this particular span say S1 and S2 obviously, S1 is always less than S2. So, in that case we will prefer to have the stiffness in horizontal direction. So, stiffness for a oil tanker if it is if it does have a uh, what do you call uh, transverse subdivision bulkhead a flat plate transfer subdivision bulkhead with stiffeners, stiffeners will be arranged horizontal fashion. So, why uh, you have to consider the smaller span? Yeah, tell me why why it should be, uh, why why I will not go for a stiffener having span S2. Maybe someone of you can say, why I will not, I mean here we are saying. Belting moment will be bending moment will be less. What will be the effect as such as far as the structural arrangement is concerned? If my span is more, here also we have said that we go for a span, we go for the stiffener arrangement where the span is less. In cargo ship, I had support at the main deck, then support at the uh, twin deck as I can see in the section. These are Suppose, let us assume bracketed and connected, okay. So, what is happening? That means, span is becoming only this much, roughly inner bottom plating to the lower deck, that is the span. In twin deck uh, area, it is from the twin deck, lower deck to the main deck. So, we are saying that we will prefer stiffeners where the span is less. Why? Because you see from this example once again, say a case of well a beam ends can be clamped or supported whatever it is acted up upon by load. It has a span of L right, some load is there. So, what happens? Your bending moment for that given load W is proportional to? L square, is not it? It is proportional to L square. 
So, as some of you were saying that bending moment will be less, less will be <coughs> when the span is less, obviously. So, what is happening? If the span is increasing for the same load, for the same loading condition, your bending moment is increasing, the function is square of the span. That means the increasing trend is much higher, right, for the same given load. So, what, what that will mean? That will mean that you will require a higher section modulus of the stiffness because your stress is given by m by z, z your section modulus and this stress should, should be less than equal to your working stress, right. That means my stress is what stress level should be uh, there or what stress level is permitted is fixed. There is a working stress. I cannot exceed that. What would be the W or the loading condition that is also fixed because I have to carry that much amount of cargo or the structure will be subjected to that much amount of load. I cannot change that. So, these two are not as such variables for me. They are fixed quantities as if variable is span, variable is section modulus. So, I will choose such a variable of span which gives me less section modulus and here we can see that if I have the span less, that means I arrange the stiffness in such a fa fashion wherein I can achieve lesser span, I achieve lesser bending moment. So, thereby I have lesser section modulus. That means weight of the structure will be less, cost of the structure will be less, simple. So, that is how these uh, stiffeners are arranged. That means in oil tanker generally we will have horizontal stiffeners for the bulkhead, whereas in general cargo ship we will have vertical stiffeners, right. So, these are flat plate stiffened bulkheads. Same thing can be achieved by way of cor corrugating the plates. That means we just provide corrugations in the plate, right. And instead of providing a welding any stiffener to it, the flat plate is corrugated, I say corrugated. So, what is done here is basically the parameters are how much is this length, what is the depth. So, this determines what is the section modulus requirement. Like in case of uh, flat plate stiffened bulkhead, we calculated the plate thickness as well as the stiffness section modulus. Here we will calculate the section modulus of this arrangement. It is referred to as corrugated bulkhead. The advantage here is fabrication wise it is easier because if we have the necessary hydraulic presses wherein these corrugations can be developed. That means, from one single plate, say this corrugation, each single plate gives me this corrugation, right. Essentially, it is somewhat say like this. That means, along the length, right, the plate has been corrugated. We have said that plate length is around 10 meter standard length. So, this is in fact, 10 meters. This dimension is worked out from the available width of the plate that is 2 meter or 2.5 or 3. From that you will have to work out this, this thing. So, each plate will give one one such corrugation suppose. So, then you put them one after another and they are welded, right. So, one long welding you get the whole bulkhead manufactured, whereas in stiffened bulkheads you have to weld so many stiffeners. So, thereby it is easy to manufacture provided you have facility to give these corrugations that means required hydraulic press, required die all those are needed. So, that is what is the corrugated bulkhead. These are generally used in bulk areas. In bulk area, the transverse uh, watertight bulkheads are generally corrugated bulkheads. Even in oil tanker, we can have corrugated bulkhead. 
right? Um, another aspect here uh, for the transverse watertight bulkheads, the plate thickness as we go up from the bottom to the top, obviously it will go on reducing. That means, if I see the plate thickness in a little exaggerated fashion, you would see somewhat like this. That means, gradually as the plate thickness is going down, obviously because the hydrostatic loading is the bulkheads are subjected to what? To a hydrostatic loading. When? Always? Only in the event of failure, in the event of sort of any damage to any compartment, there is a water ingress, then only the bulkhead is subjected to a hydrostatic loading, right. The hydrostatic loading would be, I mean, would be somewhat like this. Obviously, not, 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 not too fully to the top, to the water line only. Wherever the, the uh, I mean, I mean the water line, the vessel is floating up to the water line only. You'll have the hydrostatic loading. So as you can see, that loading will be obviously as I go up, will be less. So I can afford to have plate thicknesses gradually going down. That means the plate arrangement, if you see in case of a stiff end bulkhead, the flat in the in the flat plate bulkheads, the plate arrangements could be. These are the, let us assume this is the horizontal strikes of plates. This is, this is my, these are the butt lines, right. This symbol, this symbol indicates that it is a butt line, a welding line. Two plates have been welded along this line, right. So, these are the symbols means these are the various plates right depending on the breadth if the breadth is more than say 10 meter then obviously you need additional plates right here yeah, it's nothing but the welding lines are staggered that means this one piece is around 10 meter this is additional say 2 meter or 4 meter whatever depending on the breadth of the ship so, here what we are seeing is that suppose the bottom most plate is say 18 millimeter thick, then maybe we can provide 4, 16, 14, 12 and so on. Not necessarily it has to be in this fashion. What I want to say is I have shown some arbitrary thickness, but the thickness gradually is going down as you go up. Every 2 meter I am reducing the thickness because taking advantage of since the plates are uh, being provided uh, put in the horizontal fashion. So, this breadth will be of the order of 2 to 3 meter. This is the breadth of a standard size of plates, right. So, every 2 to 3 meter I can reduce the thickness, thereby I reduce my weight. Whereas, in case of a corrugated bulkhead, that that facility is not there, that advantage is not there because the corrugations are put vertically. Corrugations are put vertically and if they are put vertically means for the full 10 meter, I have only one thickness. I cannot change the thickness, right. So, thereby corrugated bulkhead, its advantage is from the fabrication point of view, if we have the facility of uh, bending it, giving the corrugations, but it is rather a little heavier structure compared to the flat plate bulkheads because there I can have the advantage of reducing the plate thickness, but here in corrugated bulkhead I cannot. Right? So, there are the uh, small uh, so called advantage disadvantages uh, aspects and uh, well as per usage is concerned generally they are used in the bulk carriers, oil tankers, these corrugated bulkheads. Well, now let us come to the decks and shells. By decks and shells, what he meant is, well, 
this is a half half breadth plan of say a main deck of a of any shape and the way I have drawn it appears that it is a, it would be either a bulk carrier deck of a bulk carrier or deck of a general cargo shape because I have a fairly smaller hatch openings right fairly smaller hatch openings there is a even smaller opening for the engine room right and so so what we see is that these decks well before going in further detail let us see how many types of decks are there generally in a, in a vessel in a, in a vessel what are the decks which you may encounter well one would be referred to as main deck that means now which one is main deck how to define a main deck the outermost deck so there is another term which comes is called weather deck so a main deck can be a weather deck also means the deck which is exposed to weather then another term comes which is referred to as bulkhead deck bulkhead deck bulkhead in short is written by b h d right bulkhead deck bulkhead deck is the deck to which the transverse watertight bulkhead is attached. Suppose there is a situation of a vessel for some reason, for some reason it is like this, it has two continuous decks, right, and my bulkheads, and let us assume that th these are two big bulkheads between which I have my double bottom and the other subdivision bulkheads are like this. These are my subdivision bulkheads, right. Below the subdivision bulkhead you have the watertight floors, okay. So now this deck and let us assume that I have my superstructure here and so on. So, in this case this deck becomes becomes your weather deck, because that is exposed to weather and the deck below that is not exposed to weather, but the but my bulkheads are only extended up to the deck, up to that deck which is below the weather deck. So, this then becomes my bulkhead deck. because all the flooding calculations everything will be done based on this bulkhead deck because in the event of flooding in the event of any damage a compartment getting flooded the flooding will remain confined up to the bulkhead deck naturally because to that deck the bulkheads are extended right so that is how this main deck weather deck bulkhead deck so here this weather deck will be referred to as a main deck because main deck is nothing but the deck which you are mainly using, mainly using means well which is exposed, right. So these are some of the terminologies but these are the just subtle differences. In vast majority of vessels, these three will be the one and the same. That means for all practical purposes only some very specific requirement is there all vessels will have a main deck which is a weather deck which is a bulkhead deck right then you have lower deck or also referred to as twin deck twin deck means twin deck is a specific case of lower deck or second twin deck first twin deck also one can say when there is a multi decker ship there will be several lower decks. If it is a general cargo ship, it generally has only one lower deck that is the weather deck or the main deck, lower deck, right. In a rural vessel, vessel where you have those uh, automobiles coming in, it will have a multi decker vessel because you need places for stacking the cars. 
So, it will have several watt decks. Um, if it is a bulk carrier, there, there is no lower deck, oil tanker, no lower deck, right. So, that is what is the uh, uh, lower deck. Well, so these decks, whether it is a main deck, lower deck, weather deck, bulkhead deck, all these, and of course, there is another kind of decks one can say in the accommodation structure in the in the in the so called superstructure where where you have the accommodation region right so those decks are also referred to as accommodation decks these decks these are also deck accommodation deck right so we will be talking about primarily these uh, decks which contributes towards the strength the accommodation deck which is there in the superstructure, they are not contributing towards the overall strength of the ship. But these decks, we are talking about the lower deck or the main deck, these are contributing towards the strength of the ship because they are continuous over the full length. There are discontinuities in between, but otherwise it is continuous over the full length, right. So, since they are so continuous, so, they, they need to be properly strengthened because it is two way thing. In one sense, we say that the deck will provide strength to the ship structure. Well, for a ship structure, for a hull guard, the entire hull is there, which all items will provide, which all structural items will provide strength towards this against longitudinal bending because we have seen. The hull guard is subjected to one of the most severe loading condition is longitudinal bending when it is supported on the wave crest and all that. So, what are the members which contributes towards that strength? The members which are continuous in the longitudinal direction, right? Which are they? Well, the main deck is one, one member, the side shelves, the bottom shelves, sh shell inner bottom plating and all the longitudinal stiffeners, all the members which are running longitudinally. So, they are contributing towards strength, right, towards longitudinal strength. So, a deck will be able to provide strength provided it has its own strength. That means, it should be suitably stiffened, suitably stiffened. Now, there is another aspect also that which members are providing strength like suppose in this case this is a main deck which is longitudinally framed this particular sketch which we see this is a just plan view of a main deck which is longitudinally stiffened what do i mean by longitudinally stiffened that means it has primary stiffening members or longitudinals right that means the deck has longitudinal stiffener. These black lines are the longitudinal stiffeners. This green line is the hatch side girder, right? And then we have talked about uh, some more uh, additional members because, as you can see, if I have only longitudinal deck is suitably then longitudinally stiffened, but the span is becoming very high from one bulkhead to another bulkhead. So, from one bulkhead to another bulkhead, it could be 20 meters, 30 meters, I mean depending on the vessel size, right. So, if that huge span it becomes, then you can again well imagine what would be the scantling of each longitudinal. So, if the span is very high, your scantling needed will be very high. If the scantling is very high, then what happens? Your, if I see uh, the a section. Suppose you have uh, the deck like this. Say again a general cargo carrier, you have a main deck, a lower deck. So, if I have such huge span from bulkhead to bulkhead, then the deck longitudinals may look like this. Right? 
what I am trying to show here is then you have a clear height of only this much, right? Wherever the longitudinals are there, you have a clear height of this much. So, you are losing virtually this space from usage, is not it? So, that will not be a very good design. So, uh, how to handle that? That means, if we can provide some supports in between. So, automatic supports are also there. We have the hatch and beams, we have talked about it. So, automatically it is becoming less. Then also between the two hatch and beam, this hatch opening can be quite big. So, depending on the requirement, we provide more intermediate transverses. These red ones are called transverses. They are supporting the longitudinals. We have talked about this, is not it? We have shown how, how they intersected. That means the longitudinals are supported by these transverses. Right. So, that is how the structural arrangement looks, I mean it looks like that means it will have transverses, it will have longitudinals, in case of a longitudinal framing system it is, it looks like this. Now the question comes, what about this zone in between the hatch openings, right? So, whether we should have the longitudinals running like that because within the hatch opening they, they are to be cut, is not it? It cannot be continuous. So, whether it is worthwhile to have the longitudinals like this, how that should be? So, let us just uh, draw this for sake of comparison and see what it means. Um, well, uh, let us only draw a part of the, only that part where this is occurring, that means only a part of the portion of the deck, right. So, here you have the bulkhead, the outer shell running, the bulkhead and you have your hatch opening. So, we have seen that uh, our, it is longitudinally stiffened. So, stiffness are running like this. Right. But now, what is happening to this space? Because another hatch opening is coming right here. So, what will happen to this space? How you think the stiffening should be done for this place? Why? In real sense, actually since I mean from the common logic, otherwise I would not have asked. Common logic says that it should be, it, it will not be longitudinal, it should be transverse, otherwise I would not ask because the general interpolation would have been that longitudinal. So, here you have cut it down, right. So, in actual practice the framing would be like this, the stiffening, right. They will be put like this. Right. Now, why? Why not that here also it could have been like this. That means, the longitudinals outside the line of opening are continuous, inside the line opening they are terminated, could have been, but it is not done that way. Instead, they are sort of put in the transverse direction. The reason is, the reason is this particular length that means opening from one hatch opening to the other hatch opening, this small length is much less compared to the full length of the ship, much, much less. Well, now let us look into a aspect like this. Suppose you have a beam, 
say a beam simply supported in and is acted upon by load and purposely drawing the load very on on much above so what will happen it will try to bend right now if i put another beam on top on top of it and rigidly get them connected weld it right so what has happened the section modulus has increased so under the same loading the deflection will be less stresses will be less right now i do one thing that this top beam i cut it off these red marks are that I, I, I make small small gaps or in other words you have the beam as it were originally and over that you connect small small pieces of beams. Suppose a situation like this, these are thoroughly connected. So, will it give the same strength as that of a continuous beam? Definitely not, it will not give. What will happen is when you apply the, the forces, these small additional beams will take the bend shape that like that means when the beam will bend, it will bend along with it. When I am providing over the beam another beam of the continuous same length, I weld it perfectly, then what is happening? That second beam is opposing the bending or opposing the action of the forces. That means it is providing strength to the primary beam number 1, the first beam. But now instead of that, if I put small, small elements weld it and try to apply the same force, I will find that there is a marginal increase in the strength of the first beam, marginal increase. Why? Because I will see, if I observe, I will see that whatever small pieces have been welded, they have taken the bent shape, they have bent, I mean instead of opposing the process of bending, they have actually aligned itself with that bent shape. So now you go on increasing the length of this cut pieces. First I put only this small, now I make it double, triple, at one point I will see it is gaining strength. So when you talk about that there is a continuous longitudinal member, which one will, uh, uh, will contribute towards longitudinal strength and which, will, which one will not contribute towards longitudinal strength is a function of the overall length, right. So, there is some term called effective length. If the effective length of the structure is greater than equal to 15 percent of the length of the ship, then it is taken that that particular member, a longitudinal member will contribute towards longitudinal strength or in other words when you are going to calculate the section modulus at a section of the ship, say at this section, which all members you will take? The members which has a length more than 15 percent of the length, right. So, you think of a section in this, along this line, that means in between the hatch openings, right. So, if I take a section along this line, the section uh, shape would be you have the deck continuous right you have the longitudinals and let us assume that within this space also I have longitudinal members right like this longitudinal members if I have longitudinal members like this Right. Then how the section here would look like, right, also it will be like this. Now what is happening, these longitudinals are coming in way of the opening, these ones, right. So their length 
is much smaller than that effective length. So, they will not actually contribute towards any longitudinal strength. So, their purpose is not at all served. These longitudinals will not contribute to any strength. So, whether you have them or not, it does not really make much difference. Of course, it will contribute towards local strength because you do require local strength also here. So, it will only contribute towards local strength, but not to the longitudinal strength. Now, what has been observed in, in, in addition to this is that at the same time, well, at the same time what is happening like as these longitudinals are not contributing to local to longitudinal to overall longitudinal strength. So, the section modulus of these will be much less obviously, section modulus will be less for same reason the thickness of this plate or the thickness of the plating here will also be much less compared to the thickness here will be of the even I mean it can be in this region the thickness here of this plate suppose if it if it is 20 millimeter right the plate thickness in this zone for a given shape could be as low as 12 millimeter so what it means here the long channel uh, uh, scanting will be less that is fine enough to support the local load plate thickness will be less so by being plate thickness less what happens when the ship is uh, well on in service it also undergoes loading in this direction isn't it transverse loading so the deck plate will be under transverse in plane compression so, these plate may suffer or will suffer buckling if the stiffening arrangement is like this. So, because of the loading, the transverse loading which is coming on the ship, right. This part of the plate will suffer buckling. So, it will be better if I have arrangement like this. So, it will then withstand that force. Why it is suffering buckling? Because the thickness is less, the plate thickness is less there. Now, now just to uh, resist buckling, I can increase plate thickness, but that will not be a good design. Instead, these long channels, I turn them, put them in, in line with the action of, uh, in line with the uh, forces, compressive forces are acting. Right. So, instead of longitudinal members, I put them transverse direction. So, it solves the problem. So, this part of the structure, this, this area, this is referred to as cross deck structure. Now, interestingly, this looks very obvious that well, since that the uh, length of that plate is less, it is not going to contribute towards strength. So, automatically its plate thickness will be less. Obviously, the long channels putting in this uh, in the long channel direction does not make much sense. But interestingly, what happens is if you look back in the early long channel framed ships, this cross deck structure used to have long channels. That means, here it used to be the long channels is to be in this direction. Only in service when people found the plate, this cross deck structure is suffering buckling, then only people realize that what is to be done. So, in these cases what happens, many things are obvious, but you overlook them. Because why? Because you are bothered, one is bothered with the overall strength. This is a very insignificant area because this is whenever in a shift structure, whenever a member is not contributing to the uh, overall hull guarder strength. So, that is uh, uh, not considered as uh, one of those uh, major 
structural members right so the checks and inspections are somewhat of lesser degree in those areas so these are the problems anyway so that is what is the cross deck structure uh, uh, has to be transversely stiffened right well other things as we see here the uh, decks are longitudinal stiffened and this particular longitudinal you can see I have stopped it here maybe it can be further extended like this it has a significance that means I am not further extending it if in this particular drawing if, if this last longitudinal if I further extend it may hit the side shell right. Now the thing is the structural arrangement should be such that no structural member should be kept as if hanging the end connection should be there why because the whole arrangement the ultimate goal is to uh, provide for a good load path that is whatever load is coming that should get well and evenly distributed over the entire structure because the entire structure ultimately is supported by a distributed force buoyancy force so we generally will not keep any member as if hanging it's not really hanging it will be welded to the main deck but still the end is hanging as if so there should be a proper end connection that means end termination should be there so where at the termination this is a longitudinal member this is a transverse member so it terminates in the transverse member this termination is properly bracketed properly connected so that the end will have a some connection both both are actually connected to the hull I mean hull means well the here the we are talking about the deck deck is stiffened by the longitudinals mm -hmm. right deck is stiffened by the longitudinals now longitudinals I am saying they are continuous now by continuous means what the ship the hull is taking the deck is converging right so at the side wherever it is converging the it, it is coming and sort of uh, it will terminate at the shell end at the shell so it cannot just terminate at the shell it should terminate at a frame at its at a at a stiffening member it cannot go and terminate at the frame so the nearest stiffening member it gets before the shell so there it is terminated that means it will be connected and in case of a longitudinal longitudinal framing system your transverse members will have higher scantling than the longitudinal members why because the transverse member members will provide support to the longitudinal members like we are talking to make the span less so these red lines are the deck transverses right the one which are at the end of the hatch opening we call them hatch end beam others are deck transverses so deck transverse they are uh, i mean they are providing support to the deck longitudinals right so that is what um, are the decks so this same philosophy will be used whether it's a lower deck or a main deck in all decks everywhere now as we see the uh, plating arrangement of the deck we will see that the plate thicknesses as I have said that outside the hatch opening the places outside the hatch opening will have a uh, higher plate thickness that means if we see the plating arrangement suppose you have this uh, these are your say the bulkhead locations you have the hatch openings right so the area here this particular area this part of the plate is referred to as plate outside line of opening this is referred to as outside line of opening right 
because this is inside line of opening right so obviously plate thickness since these are small pieces of as this length is much less compared to the overall length so this is not taking uh, contributing towards the strength so the plate thicknesses will be less if we take a closer look at this area maybe um, just a more endless view of this corner corner of a hatch opening right what we will see is that some plate is running there is another plate now say these are my seam lines these lines which I have drawn they are the welding lines they are the pieces of plate say this is plate number 1 plate number 2 3 4 5 6 7 and so on because the deck will be made up of several plates put together isn't it so so what we will see is the thickness of the plates say 1 2 3 will be much more compared to the thickness of the plates of 6, 7. So, thickness right of plates say 1, 2, 3 like this will be greater than that of this thickness of these plates because they are the plates lying in the outside the line of opening. They will they are taking part in the so called the long channel bending right. Whereas, this particular plate plate number four in the corner is a it has additional role to play because it is right in the corner and you can see the corner is rounded it is not to avoid stress it has been uh, rounded to avoid stress concentration minimize stress concentration but still it will have a higher stress level. So, to withstand that this particular plate number four gets a, a special name it is called insert plate as if the plate 4 has been inserted there. What is the speciality? The thickness of the plate 4 is greater than all the plates in in that vicinity. That means, the higher plate thicknesses were these 3, 2, 1, etcetera is even higher than that, right, even higher than that. That means, we provide for an additional thickness of plate additional thickness in that corner plate that is what is referred to as insert plate. So, that is how the plate thicknesses are uh, are arranged I mean what would be the thickness etcetera obviously that is calculated through the standard rules whatever has been provided in the classification society rules. And then as you come in the forward section obviously again here the as per the bending moment is less but because of local strength again the plate thicknesses are increased so as we go away from the center forward or aft there will be a gradual decrease in the plate thickness but again will rise right at the forward end because it may suffer heating of green waters means waves it may it will have to support the deck machinery, the anchor winch etc will be there. So, local load. In addition to that the framing system here is arranged like this. It is neither in the long general direction nor in the transverse direction somewhat oblique. They are referred to as cant frames sorry cant beams.
they are refer referred to as Kent beams and in the same plane the frames are referred to as Kent frames right because you will have the deck long channels, side shell long channel or side shell frames. Here we will have Kent beams, Kent frames in the same plane. Why it is done this way? Because you see the forward deck will become narrow. So, taking the longitudinals and putting the frames in the plane of the longitudinal becomes difficult. So, that is why some radial arrangement is done. Similar thing also can happen in the aft. Right. So, that is what is the uh, uh, deck arrangement. Okay, we will see. Um, Maybe in the next class we will see a little bit about the side shell and the inner bottom plating, how the arrangements are. Essentially, they will be either transversely stiffened or longitudinal stiffened. For all practical purpose, uh, it is worthwhile to have longitudinal framing system for any longitudinal member. Means the decks, the inner bottom, the side shell, the bottom shell, all longitudinally framed, unless until it it it. Uh, uh, it obstructs functioning or obstructs cargo storage or obstructs some other aspect. If it is not there, it is preferable to have totally long channel stiffening all over. Okay. So, next we will see uh, the shells and in our bottom plating. Mm -hmm.